Uratu, which corresponds to the biblical mountains of Ararat, is the name of a geographical region commonly used as the exonym for the Iron Age kingdom also known by the modern rendition of its endonym, the Kingdom of Van, centered around Lake Van in the historic Armenian highlands present-day eastern Anatolia. The written language that the kingdom's political elite used is referred to as Urartian, which appears in cuneiform inscriptions in Armenia and eastern Turkey. It is unknown what language was spoken by the peoples of Uratu at the time of the existence of the kingdom, but there is linguistic evidence of contact between the Proto-Armenian language and the Urartian language at an early date sometime between the 3rd 2nd millennium BC, occurring prior to the formation of Uratu as a kingdom. The kingdom rose to power in the mid 9th century BC, but went into gradual decline and was eventually conquered by the Iranian Medes in the early 6th century BC. The geopolitical region would re emerge as Armenia shortly after. Being heirs to the Eurasian realm, the earliest identifiable ancestors of the Armenians are the peoples of Uratu. Name and etymology The name Uratu Armenian, Uratu Assyrian, Mat Uratu, Babylonian, Urashto, Hebrew, Ararat Ararat comes from Assyrian sources. Shalmanzai 1263 BC recorded a campaign in which he subdued the entire territory of Uruatri. The Shalmanza text uses the name Uratu to refer to a geographical region, not a kingdom, and names eight lands contained within Uratu, which at the time of the campaign were still disunited. Uratu is cognate with the biblical Ararat, Akkadian, Urashto, and Armenian Ararat. In addition to referring to the famous biblical highlands, Ararat also appears as the name of a kingdom in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 27, mentioned together with Mini and Ashkenaz. Mount Ararat is located approximately 120 kilometers (75 miles) north of its former capital. The name Kingdom of Van Urashian, B -R -E, B -N -E -L -E, Vani is derived from the Urashian toponym Bianili or Bianli, which was adopted in Old Armenian as Van, Van because of Beticism in linguistics, when the letters B and V undergo a sound change, hence the names Kingdom of Van or Vanich Kingdom. Other Urashian toponyms and words went through the same sound change as the Armenian language spread throughout the region and absorbed them. See Erebuni and Erevan. In the 6th century BC, with the emergence of Armenia in the region, the name of the region was simultaneously referred to as variations of Armenia and Uratu. In the trilingual Behistun inscription, carved in 521 or 520 BC by the order of Darius I, the country referred to as Uratu in Akkadian is called Armenia in Old Persian and Harminuya in the Elamite language. The mentions of Uratu in the books of Kings and Isaiah of the Bible were translated as Armenia in the Septuagint. Some English language translations, including the King James Version, follow the Septuagint translation of Uratu as Armenia. The identification of the biblical mountains of Ararat with the Mount Ararat Turkish, Agri Dagi, is a modern identification based on postbiblical tradition. The name Ararat that was later used to describe lands located in the central region of the Kingdom of Armenia seems to have been of local usage as no known classical works use this word to refer to Armenia. The Ararat province of modern Armenia is named after Mount Ararat, which itself receives its name from the biblical mountains of Ararat or mountains of Uratu. Other names Scholars such as Carl Ferdinand Friedrich Lehmann Haupt believed that the people of Uratu called themselves Kuldini after the god Haldi. Boris Piotrovsky wrote that the Eurasians first appear in history in the 13th century BC as a league of tribes or countries which did not yet constitute a unitary state. In the Assyrian annals the term Uruatri Uratu as a name for this league was superseded during a considerable period of years by the term Land of Neri Shupriya Akkadian, Armani Subatu from the 3rd millennium BC that is believed to have originally been a Hurrian or Mitanni state that was subsequently annexed into the Eurasian Confederation. 
Shupriya is often mentioned in conjunction with a district in the area called Arm, also referred to as Ermi or Armani, which some scholars have linked to the name of Armenia. Linguists John Grepin and Igor Diakonov argued that the Eurasians referred to themselves as Shurel, sometimes transliterated as Shurili or Cyrilli, a name mentioned within the royal titles of the kings of Uratu, e.g. The King of Suri lands. The word Suri has been variously theorized as originally referring to chariots, swords, the region of Shupriya, perhaps an attempt by the ruling dynasty to associate themselves with the Hurrians, or the entire world. Topic: History. Topic: Origins. Assyrian inscriptions of Shalmaneser I c. 1274 BC first mention Uruturi as one of the states of Neri, a loose confederation of small kingdoms and tribal states in the Armenian highland in the 13th to 11th centuries BC which he conquered. Uruturi itself was in the region around Lake Van. The Neri states were repeatedly subjected to further attacks and invasions by the Assyrians, especially under Tukulti Ninurta I c. 1240 BC, Tiglath Pileser I, c. 1100 BC, Ashur Bel Kala, c. 1070 BC, Adad Narari II, c. 900 BC, Tukulti Ninurta II, c. 890 BC, and Ashur Nazipal II, 883 to 859 BC. Uratu re-emerged in Assyrian inscriptions in the 9th century BC as a powerful northern rival of Assyria, which lay to the south in northern Mesopotamia and northeast Syria. The Neri states and tribes became a unified kingdom under King Aramu c. 860–843 BC, whose capital at Arzashkan was captured by the Assyrians under Shalmaneser III. Roughly contemporaries of the Urotri, living just to the west along the southern shore of the Black Sea, were the Kaskas known from Hittite sources. Growth The Middle Assyrian Empire fell into a period of temporary stagnation for decades during the first half of the 8th century BC, which had aided Urotu's growth. Within a short time it became one of the largest and most powerful states in the Near East Sarduri I c. 832–820 BC, son of King Aramu, successfully resisted the Assyrian attacks from the south, led by Shalmaneser III, consolidated the military power of the state and moved the capital to Tushpar modern Van, on the shore of Lake Van. His son, Ispuini c. 822–800 BC annexed the neighboring state of Musazir and made his son Sarduri II viceroy. Musazir later became an important religious center of the Eurasian kingdom. Ispuini was in turn attacked by Shamshi Adad V. His successor Menua c. 800–785 BC also enlarged the kingdom greatly and left inscriptions over a wide area. Uratu reached the highest point of its military might under Menua's son Argishti I c. 785–760 BC, becoming one of the most powerful kingdoms of ancient Near East. Argishti I added more territories along the Arix River and Lake Seven, and frustrated Shalmaneser IV's campaigns against him. Argishti also founded several new cities, most notably Erebuni Fortress in 782 BC. 6,600 captured slaves worked on the construction of the new city. At its height, the Uratu kingdom stretched north beyond the Arax River Greek, Araxes, and Lake Seven, encompassing present-day Armenia and even the southern part of present-day Georgia almost to the shores of the Black Sea, west to the sources of the Euphrates, east to present-day Tabriz, Lake Ermia, and beyond, and south to the sources of the Tigris. Tiglath Pileser III of Assyria conquered Uratu in the first year of his reign 745 BC. There the Assyrians found horsemen and horses, tamed as colts for riding, that were unequaled in the south, where they were harnessed to Assyrian war chariots. <laughs> <laughs> Decline and recuperation In 714 BC, the Uratu kingdom suffered heavily from Sumerian raids and the campaigns of Sargon II. The main temple at Mushashir was sacked, and the Eurasian king Rusa I was crushingly defeated by Sargon II at Lake Ermia. 
He subsequently committed suicide in shame. Rus's son Argish D. BC, restored Uratu's position against the Sumerians, however, it was no longer a threat to Assyria, and peace was made with the new king of Assyria Sennacherib in 705 BC. This in turn helped Uratu enter a long period of development and prosperity, which continued through the reign of Argishti's son Rusa II 685 BC. After Rusa II, however, the Uratu grew weaker under constant attacks from Sumerian and Scythian invaders. As a result, it became dependent on Assyria, as evidenced by Rusa II's son Sarduri III (645–635 BC), referring to the Assyrian king Ashurbanipal as his father. Topic: <laughs> Fall. According to Eurasian epigraphy, Sarduri III was followed by three kings. Eremina (635–620 BC), his son Rusa III (620–609 BC), and the latter's son Rusa IV (609–590 to or 585 BC). Late during the 7th century BC, during or after Sarduri III's reign, Uratu was invaded by Scythians and their allies, the Medes. In 612 BC, the Median king Syakes the Great together with Nabopolassar of Babylon and the Scythians conquered Assyria after it had been badly weakened by civil war. The Medes then took over the Eurasian capital of Van towards 585 BC, effectively ending the sovereignty of Uratu. According to the Armenian tradition, the Medes helped the Armenians establish the Arontid dynasty. Many Eurasian ruins of the period show evidence of destruction by fire. This would indicate two scenarios. Either Media subsequently conquered Uratu, bringing about its subsequent demise, or Uratu maintained its independence and power, going through a mere dynastic change, as a local Armenian dynasty or dynasties the Haykazunis and or the Arontids overthrew the ruling family with the help of the Median army. Ancient sources support the latter version. Xenophon, for example, states that Armenia, ruled by an Arontid king, was not conquered until the reign of Median king Astyages, 585 to 550 BC, long after Median invasion of the late 7th century BC. Similarly, Strabo, 1st century BC, 1st century AD, wrote that I, in ancient times Greater Armenia ruled the whole of Asia, after it broke up the empire of the Syrians, but later, in the time of Astyages, it was deprived of that great authority." Medieval Armenian chronicles corroborate the Greek and Hebrew sources. In particular, Movsa's Korenatsi writes that the Armenian king Skaordi Haykazuni was a political foe of Assyria during the reign of Sennacherib (705–681 BCE), which would have been contemporaneous with the rule of Argishti II. Skaordi's son, Peruir Haykazuni, also known as Peruir Skaordi, helped Syakers and his allies conquer Assyria, for which Syakers recognized him as the king of Armenia. According to Korenatsi, Media conquered Armenia only much later under Astyages. It is possible that the last Eurasian king, Rusa IV, had connections to the future incoming Armenian Arontids dynasty. Uratu was destroyed in either 590 BC or 585 BC. By the late 6th century, Uratu had certainly been replaced by Armenia. Legacy The region formerly known as Uratu became the satrapy of Armenia under the Persian Achaemenids and governed by the Armenian Arontid dynasty. The satrapy later became the independent kingdom of Armenia, under Arontid rule. Little is known of what happened to the region of Uratu under the foreign rule following its fall and the emergence of the satrapy of Armenia. According to historian Turij Dayare, during the Armenian rebellion against the Persian king Darius I in 521 BC, 70 years after the fall of Uratu, some of the personal and topographic names attested in connection with Armenia or Armenians were of Eurasian origin, suggesting that Eurasian elements persisted within Armenia after its fall. The Behistun inscription, which was written in three languages, refers to the country as Armenia and the people as Armenian in Old Persian, but as 
and Urashtar in Akkadian, suggesting that Urartu and Armenia were part of the same geopolitical entity. Descendant communities According to historian M. Chahan, Eurasian history is part of Armenian history, in the same sense that the history of the ancient Britons is part of English history, and that of the Gauls is part of French history. Armenians can legitimately claim, through Euratu, an historical continuity of some 4,000 years, their history is among those of the most ancient peoples in the world. The discovery of Uratu has also come to play a significant role in 19th to 21st century Armenian nationalism. Topic: <laughs> Geography. Uratu comprised an area of approximately 200,000 square miles (520,000 square kilometers), extending from the Euphrates in the west to Lake Ermia in the east, and from the Caucasus Mountains south towards the Zagros Mountains in northern Iraq. It was centered around Lake Van, which is located in present-day eastern Anatolia. At its apogee, Uratu stretched from the borders of northern Mesopotamia to the southern Caucasus, including present-day Turkey, Nakhchivan, Armenia, and southern Georgia, up to the River Kura. Archaeological sites within its boundaries include Altintepe, Toprakale, Patnos, and Hakeberd. Uratu fortresses included Erebuni Fortress, present-day Yerevan, Van Fortress, Argashtihinili, Anzaf, Hakeberd, and Baskale, as well as Teshibaini, Kamir Blur, Red Mound, and others. Topic: <laughs> Discovery. Inspired by the writings of the medieval Armenian historian Movsas Korenatsi who had described Eurasian works in Van and attributed them to the legendary Ara the Beautiful and Queen Semiramis, the French scholar Jean Saint-Martin suggested that his government send Friedrich Eduard Schultz, a German professor, to the Van area in 1827 on behalf of the French Oriental Society. Schultz discovered and copied numerous cuneiform inscriptions, partly in Assyrian and partly in a hitherto unknown language. Schultz also discovered the Kelishan stele, bearing an Assyrian Eurasian bilingual inscription, located on the Kelishan Pass on the current Iraqi Iranian border. A summary account of his initial discoveries was published in 1828. Schultz and four of his servants were murdered by Kurds in 1829 near Baskale. His notes were later recovered and published in Paris in 1840. In 1828, the British Assyriologist Henry Kresik Rawlinson had attempted to copy the inscription on the Kelishan stele, but failed because of the ice on the steel's front side. The German scholar R. Roche made a similar attempt a few years later, but he and his party were attacked and killed. In the late 1840s Sir Austin Henry Layard examined and described the Eurasian rock-cut tombs of Van Castle, including the Argishti chamber. From the 1870s, local residents began to plunder the Toprakale ruins, selling its artifacts to European collections. In the 1880s this site underwent a poorly executed excavation organised by Hormuzd Rassam on behalf of the British Museum. Almost nothing was properly documented. The first systematic collection of Eurasian inscriptions, and thus the beginning of Eurotology as a specialized field dates to the 1870s, with the campaign of Sir Archibald Henry Sace. The German engineer Karl Sester, discoverer of Mount Nemret, collected more inscriptions in 1890 over 1. Waldemar Belk visited the area in 1891, discovering the Rusa Stel. A further expedition planned for 1893 was prevented by Turkish-Armenian hostilities. Belk together with Lehman Haupt visited the area again in 1898 9, excavating Toprakale. On this expedition, Belk reached the Kelishan Stel, but he was attacked by Kurds and barely escaped with his life. Belk and Lehman Haupt reached the Stel again in a second attempt, but were again prevented from copying the inscription by weather conditions. After another assault on Belk provoked the diplomatic intervention of Wilhelm II, Sultan Abdul Hamid II agreed to pay Belk a sum of 80,000 gold marks in reparation. During World War I, the Lake Van region briefly fell under Russian control. 
In 1916, the Russian scholars Nikolai Yakovlevich Ma and Yosef Abgarovich Orbeli, excavating at the Van Fortress, uncovered a four-faced stele carrying the annals of Sarduri II. In 1939 Boris Borisovich Piotrovsky excavated Karmir Blur, discovering Tizbai, the city of the god of war, Tizbai. Excavations by the American scholars Kursop and Silver Lake during 1938–40 were cut short by World War II, and most of their finds and field records were lost when a German submarine torpedoed their ship, the SS Athenia. Their surviving documents were published by Manfred Kaufmann in 1977. A new phase of excavations began after the war. Excavations were at first restricted to Soviet Armenia. The fortress of Karmir Blur, dating from the reign of Rusa II, was excavated by a team headed by Boris Piotrovsky, and for the first time the excavators of a Eurasian site published their findings systematically. Beginning in 1956 Charles A. Burney identified and sketch surveyed many Eurasian sites in the Lake Van area and, from 1959, a Turkish expedition under Tarzan Ozguk excavated Al Tintepe and Arif Erzin. In the late 1960s, Eurasian sites in northwest Iran were excavated. In 1976, an Italian team led by Mio Salvini finally reached the Kelishan Stel, accompanied by a heavy military escort. The Gulf War then closed these sites to archaeological research. Okte Beli resumed excavation of Eurasian sites on Turkish territory. In 1989, Ayanis, a 7th century BC fortress built by Rus's II of Uratu, was discovered 35 km north of Van. In spite of excavations, only a third to a half of the 300 known Eurasian sites in Turkey, Iran, Iraq, and Armenia have been examined by archaeologists. Wartka 1993. Without protection, many sites have been plundered by local residents searching for treasure and other saleable antiquities. On 12 November 2017, it was announced that archaeologists in Turkey's eastern Van province had discovered the ruins of a 3,000-year-old Uratu castle during underwater excavations around Lake Van led by Van Yuzunku Yıl University and the governorship of Turkey's eastern Bitlis province, and that revealed these underwater ruins are from the Iron Age Uratu civilization and are thought to date back to the 8th to 7th centuries BC. Topic. Economy and politics The economic structure of Uratu was similar to other states of the ancient world, especially Assyria. The state was heavily dependent on agriculture, which required centralized irrigation. These works were managed by kings, but implemented by free inhabitants and possibly slave labor provided by prisoners. Royal governors, influential people and, perhaps, free peoples had their own allotments. Individual territories within the state had to pay taxes the central government, grain, horses, bulls, etc. In peacetime, Uratu probably led an active trade with Assyria, providing cattle, horses, iron and wine. According to archaeological data, farming on the territory of Uratu developed from the Neolithic period, even in the 3rd millennium BC. In the Eurasian Age, agriculture was well developed and closely related to Assyrian methods on the selection of cultures and methods of processing. From cuneiform sources, it is known that in Uratu grew wheat, barley, sesame, millet, and emma, and cultivated gardens and vineyards. Many regions of the Uratu state required artificial irrigation, which has successfully been organized by the rulers of Uratu in the heyday of the state. In several regions remain ancient irrigation canals, constructed by Uratu, mainly during the Argashti I and Menua period, some of which are still used for irrigation. <laughs> Art and architecture There is a number of remains of sturdy stone architecture, as well as some mud brick, especially when it has been burnt, which helps survival. Stone remains are mainly fortresses and walls, with temples and mausolea, and many rock-cut tombs. The style, which developed regional variations, shows a distinct character, partly because of the greater use of stone compared to neighboring cultures. The typical temple was square, with stone's walls as thick as the open internal area but using mud brick for the higher part. 
These were placed at the highest point of a citadel and from surviving depictions were high, perhaps with gabled roofs. Their emphasis on verticality has been claimed as an influence of later Christian Armenian architecture. The art of Uratu is especially notable for fine lost wax bronze objects, weapons, figurines, vessels, including grand cauldrons that were used for sacrifices, fittings for furniture, and helmets. There are also remains of ivory and bone carvings, frescoes, cylinder seals, and of course pottery. In general their style is a somewhat less sophisticated blend of influences from neighboring cultures. Archaeology has produced relatively few examples of the jewelry in precious metals that the Assyrians boasted of carrying off in great quantities from Musazir in 714 BC. <laughs> Religion With the expansion of Eurasian territory, many of the gods worshipped by conquered peoples were incorporated into the Eurasian pantheon, as a means of confirming the annexation of territories and promoting political stability. However, although the Eurasians incorporated many deities into their pantheon, they appeared to be selective in their choices. Although many Eurasian kings made conquests in the north, such as the Lake Severn region, many of those people's gods remain excluded. This was most likely the case because Eurasians considered the people in the north to be barbaric, and disliked their deities as much as they did them. Good examples of incorporated deities however are the goddesses Bhagvati and Saladi. On Mheri Dur, or Meha Tur the Gate of Mare, overlooking modern Van in present-day Turkey, an inscription lists a total of 79 deities, and what type of sacrificial offerings should be made to each, goats, sheep, cattle, and other animals served as the sacrificial offerings. Eurasians did not practice human sacrifice. The pantheon was headed by a triad made up of Haldi, the supreme god, Theospars, Teshiba, god of thunder and storms, as well as sometimes war, and Shivini, a solo god. Their king was also the chief priest or envoy of Chaldi. Some temples to Chaldi were part of the royal palace complex, while others were independent structures. Some main gods and goddesses include Haldi Theospars Shivini Arubani Tushpuaya Bhagvati Saladi Topic. Language Eurasian language is the name retroactively applied by historians and linguists to the extinct language used in the cuneiform inscriptions of the Kingdom of Urartu. Other names used to refer to the language are Chaldean, also Haldian, or Neo Hurrian. The latter term is problematic, however, as it is now thought that Eurasian and Hurrian share a common ancestor rather than the previously held belief that Eurasian developed directly from, or was a dialect of, Hurrian. In fact, according to Eurotologist Paul Zimanski, the earliest dialect of Hurrian, seen in the Tis Adel royal inscription and reconstructed from various early 2nd millennium BCE sources, shows features that disappeared in later Hurrian but are present in Eurasian Wilhelm 1988-63. In short, the more we discover or deduce about the earliest stages of Hurrian, the more it looks like Eurasian Greg 1995-2170. The Eurasian language is believed to be part of the Caucasian group. It is an ergative agglutinative language, which belongs to neither the Semitic nor the Indo-European language families, but to the huro eurasian language family, which is most likely related to Northeast Caucasian languages. Other scholars, however, doubt that the huro eurasian and Northeast Caucasian language families are related, or believe that, while a connection is possible, there is not enough evidence at this time to be certain. Examples of the Eurasian language have survived in many inscriptions, written in the Assyrian cuneiform script, found throughout the area of the Kingdom of Urartu. Although, the bulk of the cuneiform inscriptions within Uratu were written in the Eurasian language, a minority of them were also written in Akkadian the official language of Assyria. There are also claims of autochthonous Eurasian hieroglyphs, but this remains uncertain. Unlike the cuneiform inscriptions, Eurasian hieroglyphic have not been successfully deciphered. As a result, scholars disagree as to what language is used, or whether they even constitute writing at all. 
The Eurasians originally would have used these locally developed hieroglyphs, but later adapted the Assyrian cuneiform script for most purposes. After the 8th century BC, the hieroglyphic script would have been restricted to religious and accounting purposes. The most widely accepted theory about the emergence of Indo-European in the region is that settlers related to Phrygians the Mushki and or the retroactively named Armino-Phrygians, who had already settled in the western parts of the region prior to the establishment of Uratu, had become the ruling elite under the Median Empire, followed by the Achaemenid Empire. Some have argued that the Eurasian language wasn't spoken at all see language. The kingdom of Uratu, during its dominance, had united disparate tribes, each of which had its own culture and traditions. Thus, when the political structure was destroyed, little remained that could be identified as one unified Eurasian culture. With the region reunified again under Armenia, the disparate peoples of the region mixed and became more homogenous and a unified sense of identity developed, and the Armenian language became the predominant language. Some Eurasians might have kept their former identity. According to Herodotus, the Alarodians Alarodioi, believed to be Eurasian remnants were part of the 18th satrapy of the Achaemenid Empire and formed a special contingent in the Grand Army of Xerxes I. Modern historians, however, have cast doubt on this connection as Alarodian was ostensibly a form of the name, Araration, Eurasian, a term the Eurasians are never recorded as having used for themselves. The Eurasians who were in the satrapy were then part of the amalgamation of the peoples, becoming part of the Armenian ethnogenesis. As the Armenian identity developed in the region, the memory of Uratu faded and disappeared. Parts of its history passed down as popular stories and were preserved in Armenia, as written by Movzas Korenatsi in the form of garbled legends in his 5th century book History of Armenia, where he speaks of a first Armenian kingdom in Van which fought wars against the Assyrians. It is worth noting that no kingdom called Armenia existed during the time that Assyria did, but Uratu Van did. Korenatsi's stories of these wars with Assyria would help in the rediscovery of Uratu. The toponym Uratu did not disappear, however. The name of the province of Ararat in the center of the Kingdom of Armenia is believed to be its continuum. The Ararat province of modern Armenia is named after Mount Ararat, which itself receives its name from the biblical mountains of Ararat or mountains of Uratu. Presence of the Armenian language The presence of a population who spoke Proto-Armenian in Uratu prior to its demise is subject to speculation, but the existence of Eurasian words in the Armenian language suggests early contact between the two languages and long periods of bilingualism. It is generally assumed that Proto-Armenian speakers entered Anatolia from around 1200 BC, three to four centuries before the emergence of the Kingdom of Uratu. The presence of Armenian speakers in the Armenian highlands prior to the formation of the Kingdom of Uratu is supported by a reference to the King of Uiram in an 11th century BCE list of lands conquered by the Assyrian king Tiglath Pileser the first Proto-Armenian would have derived from Paleo-Balkan languages like Armino-Phrygian and Mushki, and over the following centuries spread east to the Armenian highlands. An alternate theory suggests that Armenians were tribes indigenous to Uratu's northern periphery possibly as the Hayazans, Etuini, or Diwehi, all of whom are known only from references left by neighboring peoples such as Eurasians and Assyrians. The Kingdom of Uratu united the disparate peoples of the highlands, which began a process of intermingling and amalgamation of the peoples, languages, and cultures within the highlands. This intermixing would ultimately culminate in the emergence of the Armenian nation as the direct successors and inheritors of the Eurasian domain. While the Eurasian language was used by the royal elite, the population they ruled may have been multilingual, and some of these peoples would have spoken Armenian. In the later days of the Kingdom of Uratu, its population may have already been speaking the Armenian language, which, after the fall of Uratu, would rise to prominence and replace the Eurasian language used by the former ruling elite. An addition to this theory, supported by the official historiography of Armenia and experts in Assyrian and Eurasian studies such as Igor M. Diakonov, Georgi Melikashvili, Mikhail Nikolsky, Ivan Meschaninov, suggests that Eurasian was solely the formal written language of the state, while its inhabitants, including the royal family, spoke Armenian. 
This theory primarily hinges on the fact that the Eurasian language used in the cuneiform inscriptions were very repetitive and scant in vocabulary, having as little as 350 to 400 roots. Furthermore, over 250 years of usage, it shows no development, which is taken to indicate that the language had ceased to be spoken before the time of the inscriptions or was used only for official purposes. According to the Encyclopedia of Indo-European Culture, the Armenians according to Diakonov, are then an amalgam of the Hurrian and Eurasians, Luvians and the Proto-Armenian Mushki who carried their i.e. language eastwards across Anatolia. After arriving in its historical territory, Proto-Armenian would appear to have undergone massive influence by the languages it eventually replaced. Armenian phonology, for instance, appears to have been greatly affected by Eurasian, which may suggest a long period of bilingualism. Another theory suggested by Tamas V. Gamkalids and Vyacheslav V. Ivanov in 1984 places the Proto-Indo-European homeland the location where Indo-European would have emerged from in the Armenian highlands see, Armenian hypothesis, which would entail the presence of Proto-Armenians in the area during the entire lifetime of the Eurasian state. This Armenian hypothesis supports the theory that the Eurasian language was not spoken, but simply written, and postulates that the Armenian language is an in situ development of a third millennium BC Proto Indo European language. Ultimately, little is known of what was truly spoken in the geopolitical region until the creation of the Armenian alphabet in the 4th century AD. About one century after the fall of the Kingdom of Urartu, the 5th century BC Greek historian Xenophon claims that Armenian villagers spoke a language that sounded similar to Persian. Some scholars believe that the ethnonym, Armena, itself and all other names attested with reference to the rebellions against Darius in the satrapy of Armenia the proper names Araxa, Haldita, and Dadsis, the toponyms Zuzia, Tigre, and Uyama, and the district name Ortiara are not connected with Armenian linguistic and onomastic material attested later in native Armenian sources, nor are they Iranian, but seem related to Eurasian. However, others suggest that some of these names have Armenian or Iranian etymologies. See also Economy of Uratu Chaldeer Northeast Caucasian languages List of kings of Uratu